Are you feeling nervous about recording your very first remote podcast interview? If so, you are not alone. In this video, I'm gonna show you exactly how to record a high quality podcast episode using Squadcast, even if you've never recorded anything before. Okay, my name's Huete. I'm a podcast producer and the creator of the Emerging Voices Podcasting Accelerator. Now, if you're new here, I have made shows like Where Should We Begin with Esther Perel and This Is Dating, which was listed as one of Time Magazine's best podcasts of 2022. I've also made shows for brands like The New York Times, TED, Gates Foundation, and many, many others. So with that, let's get into how you record on Squadcast. I'm going to show you on my computer what I would do if I were starting completely from scratch, okay? Now, important thing for you to know, this is exactly what we used on some of the shows that I mentioned before. These are not uh, difficult tools to use and you can absolutely do this. Let's get into it. So the first thing you're gonna wanna do is go to squadcast.fm, uh, which as you can see, I have already gone to before, so it's gonna take you to this page. All right, so the first thing you're gonna wanna do is log into Squadcast. So you're gonna click log in here, and if you don't have an account, it's gonna ask you to sign up down here. Now, I do have an account, so it should automatically take me to my podcast that I've been working on. So this is the page that you are going to come to. This is the show that I've created here is tests and demos so that I can show you and my students how to create uh, your own sessions, right? But for you, this is just gonna say my show. And you'll know that because if you create a new show, uh, you can title it whatever it is that you are gonna name your podcast, okay? So let's go back to my dashboard. This is basically home base. Now, your first task is to go to new session and you can either start a new session or schedule a session for the future. We're gonna click schedule a session because we're assuming that this is a remote interview with someone. So let's say Kayla and Hiwete. Okay, or usually I just say Kayla X Huete. And then you schedule the interview for whatever date you are gonna have it. So my interview is gonna be on the 30th of May and it's gonna be at 10 a.m. And I can either change the time like this or I can click here and t uh, play with the toggles right here. Now it asks you for an end time, it's not gonna kick you out if you're not done in an hour, but it gives you an estimate and it gives your guest an estimate of how long this will take. And you have your time zone, which I always put in my guest's time zone, and you have the option of recording video and audio or audio only. My recommendation is to always record video and audio because that is going to allow you to use the video if you want it, even though you're not necessarily making a video podcast. And then down here, you have the maximize recording quality option. This is still in beta mode, but I typically turn it on. And when you do that, it lets you know that the link for the studio has changed. So if you had clicked it before you clicked that on, then you are gonna wanna uh, re-click copy stage link. So you have two options at the stage. You can either invite Kayla at Gmail here and you could just send her an invite from Squadcast or you can copy the stage link and send it to her in another email or you can put it in a calendar invite, okay? So let's do the latter because this is what I recommend my students do for all of their interviews and their pre-interviews. All right, so let's look at what kind of email you might wanna send your guests so that you can record the highest quality audio, okay? All right, so this is the email template library that we use in Emerging Voices. This has a set of templates that you can use for your particular interview. So send this one day before your interview. We're gonna use this template. Feel free to copy it and use what you're seeing in this email for your interviews as well. So using the template library, here is an example of the kind of email that you might want to send to your guests, okay? Hey, I'm excited to have you in the guest chair on such and such date and time. 
and make sure you're clear on the time zone. Below is everything you need to prep for the interview. Okay, so you can ignore this. This is something we do in Emerging Voices, basically so that when it's time to promote the episode, we have everything that we need. But uh, we also really want to ask them for two things in particular. First, we want to make sure they're aware of the format. We don't want to surprise people by telling them the video is going to be recorded on the day of the interview, so we let them know ahead of time. And then we also tell them where to join, okay? So we record using Squadcast, video and audio. Please join the session at your scheduled time using this link. Now, under this link, you just come here and you take your link from Squadcast and you paste it right here. And so this is gonna take them to Squadcast where they can join the interview. Another thing you can do is you can put it in a calendar invite so that people can just click the calendar invite at the time of the interview and they can access the link from there. I do both and most of our students do both. Now, if you're recording a remote interview, you're not just worried about their audio, you're also worried about yours. So let's look at exactly what you need to tell them so that they come prepared to give you their best audio. The first thing is no one should be using a phone for your interview, okay? So we want whoever is on the other line to be using a computer. And I'm telling you this because people have showed up to my interviews with a phone and nothing else. And it just doesn't capture the highest quality video. We want them to also use headphones. And ideally you want them to be using wired headphones. And these are the most affordable headphones that I found that still help you get really high uh, audio quality because they record audio from this end of the headphones and the quality tends to be generally pretty good. So these are a really good pair of headphones to use. And if they don't have a pair of wired headphones and you have funds to invest into your podcast, you can even send them a pair of headphones as a token of your appreciation. Other people will have bigger, more professional headphones like these ones. And this is what I'm gonna be using once we start recording, but it's not completely necessary. More than anything, we just want it to be wired. Now let's say they tell you, absolutely not, we can't, I don't have any wired headphones or the wired headphones that they have tends to create some sort of static. In that case, AirPods are fine. The reason we don't recommend AirPods from the beginning is because sometimes wireless headphones, especially noise canceling ones, can create uh, interference in your recording. But that is still way better than you recording an episode with no headphones. Part of the reason for that is you're gonna have echo issues. And the other part is that your audio and their audio is gonna bleed into each other. So later when you're editing, you're not gonna be able to cut your cough out of their answer, if that makes sense. Hopefully it does. Cool, let's keep going. If they have an external microphone, then we want them to use that. If they don't have an external microphone, cool, we can make it work. We also want them to make sure they're in a well-lit area with lighting facing them. So right now, I'll show you my lighting. I'm sitting in front of a window. You might see some of the construction that's happening outside. And that lighting is what is making me look well-lit. So you never want to be facing against the window because that quality is not going to be as great as this quality. Wow, you see that difference? Crazy. Next thing is you're going to tell them that you want them to be in a quiet room with soft surfaces and give them examples of what that means. A couch, carpet, curtains, all of that helps to uh, insulate the audio so that there is no audio bouncing off of uh, walls, okay? So remember, the worst place to record is a bathroom. The best place to record is a closet. So find a place that is somewhere between those two that makes sense for you to visually be recorded in. And finally, you want them to turn off all device notifications ahead of recording time, okay? Because the worst thing is somebody telling you a very impactful story and then you get a Google Calendar, ding, come in the middle. We don't want that. Now you can tell them what to expect and let's assume you've done all that. Let's go to Squadcast and see what you need to do during the actual recording. So we have this recording scheduled and we are going to start the session. It's now officially the day of your interview. You're gonna show up to your session um, 
15 minutes ahead so that you can prepare your end of the deal, okay? So she, her, the default is gonna be whatever microphone you have, but if it says default microphone name, I want you to change it to the option where it's just your microphone's name. And this is because default microphone name doesn't actually pick up the microphone that you're trying to pick up, which I hate about Squadcast, even though I love Squadcast as a whole. And your camera is going to be whatever camera you typically use. If you have an external camera that you really like, that you would like to use, you can absolutely change that setting here as well. I do have another camera, but I actually like my computer's camera more. And then here, you're gonna have the option of where you want the audio to go through. I'm gonna plug this um, headphone, this pair of headphones in, so give me a second. Now, you see that these headphones are showing up as default external headphones. Again, we want to make sure we get off of default and put in the external headphones that we are choosing, all right? I'm gonna put that in. This is considered your green room. You have done everything that you need to do in the green room, and you're gonna go to join session. All right, so you're here before your guest, and you see quite a few things. Let's look at the lay of the land, all right? So this is your hub where you can see everyone who's on the stage, meaning everybody who is gonna be recorded during this interview. So you can check whether the audio source is the right one. It is for me, this is my microphone. You can check whether the camera source is the right one. And if it's not, you could change it. I'll show you what it looks like when I change it. This is the camera coming from up here, but I don't want that. So I'm gonna change it to this. And you could change your headphone settings in here if you, let's say, for example, you saw that it still says default, you could change it to in here. An important note is I actually plug in my headphones to my computer. I do not plug it into my microphone. This is because I've just had complications when I've done that, and I want to be able to hear both me and my guest, and plugging it into the computer tends to give me the best results. Echo cancellation is off because I'm wearing headphones. There are times where even with headphones, we've had echoes and we've had to turn it on. You can test all of this before you ever hit record, okay? Now, lossless audio is gonna be toggled on. That's just the highest quality audio that you are gonna be able to get, all right? Now, when your guest joins, you are also gonna be able to see all of these settings for them. You just have to press this carrot and it's gonna show you all of their settings. You can change their settings and they're gonna get a pop-up that says, hey, the host is trying to change your settings. Are you cool with that? And they can say yes. Then you're gonna press record. You know you're recording because the recording button will show and the timer will be counting your time. At this point, you can't change any of your settings because you're in the middle of a recording. Your job is to just be present with your guests. Now, if I had another guest, they would pop up right on this side of the screen, okay? And if you don't wanna see these parts while you're recording, you can just X that out. An important detail for you is if you look down here, you'll see something that's called the VU meter. I typically sit about this much distance away from my microphone, maybe even a bit more, like this much distance, but that's because I know how much I project, how much I enunciate. If you get way too close to the mic, it's gonna start getting yellow. And if you find yourself laughing really loudly or your guest is laughing really loudly or they're too close to their mic, it's gonna go up to red. This is what we call hot audio or hot tape. And that is tape that you cannot use because when it gets too loud, you can't really fix it in your edit later. So generally you want your VU meter to show you green or yellow, but you never want it to go into the red, all right? Once they join, you're gonna ask them, hey, can you hear me clearly? Uh, how's your day been? And as they're talking about how their day has been, you're gonna be paying attention to how well you can hear their audio, 
okay? And if there are any muffles or when they move around, if you hear some like crunching, and this is especially true if they're using these headphones because they have a microphone right here. Sometimes it can hit the shirt or earrings and you're gonna be paying attention to how loud they get, how they speak and whether you can hear them clearly and if there's any obstruction to the audio. If there is, you're gonna ask them to adjust before you actually start recording your interview. Then you can go directly to your interview and start having your conversation and record it without worrying about the audio quality because you know that it's being recorded and Squadcast records locally, meaning they record not based on the quality of your internet, but based on the quality of the devices that you have plugged into, into your computer for this session. Once you're done recording, you'll wanna click stop record and Squadcast will tell you, this tab must remain open until we have done uploading the audio. Now, because this was eight minutes of audio, it didn't take that long to upload. When you've had an hour long interview, it might take a little bit longer to upload. And all you have to say is, hey, Squadcast is uploading the audio. I would love to take a couple minutes while it's doing that to hear how the conversation went for you. Thank you for sharing this, this, and this. And here's what our next steps will look like. Okay, and you're doing that partly to offboard them from your call, but also because you want your session to get uploaded to the cloud so that later, which is right now for us, you can download the audio as wanted. If you wanted to check the audio, you could just go here and click play and you can see your recording right here. You can't hear it because I have headphones in right now, but ultimately it's doing exactly what it is that we expected, right? And if you just wanted to hear the audio, you could also just play the audio. And when you're ready to download, click these three dots right here and you can say download and you can download the MP4, which is the video, the WAV file, which is the highest quality audio, or the MP3, which is a more compressed version of your audio. My recommendation is to use the WAV file. So if I downloaded my WAV file, I would name it something like Huete, the date of the interview, and you can save it to whatever folder makes sense for you. And if you want a video on how to organize your folders, if you wanna geek out on that, we absolutely can. You would click save right here. I actually don't wanna save this, so I'm gonna cancel, but that is exactly what you would do. And then when it's time to edit, you would just upload it to Descript. Now you will see here that it says edit in Descript and it allows you to go directly to Descript from, from Squadcast, which is something I don't typically do, but it's very much a possibility. And this is because Descript and Squadcast are part of the same company. They weren't always this way, but they now are. So you can absolutely go directly to Descript from Squadcast. And if you don't know what Descript is, it is a video and audio editing uh, software. So that is it. That's how you record a remote podcast episode on Squadcast. If you have questions on how to record on Riverside or on Zoom, drop them below. I am happy to show you a tutorial on how to do that. I just recommend Squadcast because that's what I use and I find to be the most affordable if you are an independent podcaster who's just getting started and especially if you know that you're gonna be editing in the script as well. If this walkthrough helped you feel more confident, please drop a microphone in the comments below and I will know that this was something that was useful for you. And if you're ready, for a little bit more support, you can book a call with me using the link in the show description below. I will see you in the next video.